Welcome to the Lifetime Assembly Channel. My name is John, and today I'm gonna to help you assemble your 10 by eight outdoor storage shed. This video will follow the steps outlined in your assembly manual that comes with your shed. If you've already begun and need help on a specific step, check the description or comments below for a timestamp associated with each step. Your shed comes in two boxes on a pallet, so let's take a look at what you should have received. This assembly requires more than one person, so be sure to have at least one other adult available to help. Before we begin the assembly process, let's take a look at the tools you'll need to complete the job. You'll need a 7 16 wrench, a 3 8 wrench, an adjustable wrench, a rubber mallet, a box cutter, a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, needle nose pliers, a hammer, safety glasses, a ladder, a drill. You may see us use an impact driver. If you decide to use one as well, be sure not to over torque or over tighten the hardware. 5 16 wood drill bit and a 5 16 masonry drill bit. To make this easier, we're going to use a 7 16 socket, a 3 8 socket, a socket adapter, a Phillips bit, a pair of vice grips, and a block of wood. All lifetime sheds require a platform. We recommend building your platform out of concrete, but you can build it out of lumber. Before you begin, make sure that the model number of your shed is listed in the description below. It's crucial that you refer to the assembly manual to review the safety instructions for this build to prevent serious injury or property damage. All right, let's get started. Hacer clic en la esquina inferior derecha de este video para ver los subtítulos en español. Section one will go over how to properly build the foundation for your shed. This video will go over the assembly for the shed and not the foundation. So it's important that you refer to section one in your assembly manual to see how to properly build your foundation. There are two different types of gutter channels. One has a notch at the end and the other one doesn't. You're going to need one of each for the first two set of trusses. Line up the holes on the connector piece with the holes in the gutter channels. Secure the connector to the gutter channels with the hardware. When tightening the hardware, be sure not to over tighten, otherwise the cap nut could break. Slide the truss brace onto the gutter channels, lining up these holes. Attach the truss brace to the gutter channel, making sure that the head of the screw is on the inside of the gutter channel. To make tightening the hardware easier, I'm going to use a Phillips bit inside of some vice grips. Slide the truss rod through the large and small truss braces and into the connector and secure with the cap nuts. Make sure that your small truss brace is oriented like this. Repeat the previous steps for a second truss assembly that's the same as the first. Thank you. 
attach a short and long gutter channel to the connector using the same method as before. Remember, the long gutter channel should not have a notch at the end of it. Attach the truss brace to the long gutter channel with the hardware. Line up the holes in the truss brace, the short gutter channel, and the vertical truss brace, making sure the vertical truss brace is oriented like this. Add the hardware and only finger tighten for now. Attach the horizontal truss brace to the short gutter support and the vertical truss brace. Tighten all remaining loose hardware. Add the truss rod to the assembly using the same method as before. Attach the L bracket through the oblong hole to the horizontal support. Only finger tighten the hardware for now. Slide the support tube through the hole at the bottom of the short gutter channel and center the tube. Connect the gables labeled AGI and AGH together. Secure the two gables together with the four screws in the center. Align the holes in the screen with the holes in the vent. Then align the holes on the vent with the holes on the front of the gable. Secure the vent to the gable with the hardware. Insert an end cap into each end of the square tube. Align the holes in the square tube with the divots in the gable, making sure the dimples are facing down. Secure the square tube to the gable with the hardware. Repeat the previous steps for a second gable. Lay the gable half FTM over the other gable FTN. Secure the gable halves in the center with the hardware.
Insert an end cap into each end of the square tube. Line up the holes in the square tube with the divots on the gable, making sure that the dimples are facing down. Then, double check that the dimple for the square hole is facing towards you. Secure the square tube to the gable through the larger holes with the hardware. Finish securing the square tube to the gable through the small set of holes. Take the door with the Lifetime logo and slide the hinge tube into the round hole at the bottom of the door. Before moving on, make sure that the square holes in the channel line up with the notch on the door. You'll also notice that the door end channel has a slight curve and that is by design. Place your deadbolts into the cutouts at the top and bottom of your door and then slide your door end channel over the deadbolts. Attach the two halves of the handle together, then attach the handle to the door, making sure not to over tighten the hardware. Attach the strike plate and the lock bracket to the door with the hardware. Only finger tighten the hardware for now. In a small groove around the window, insert the beetle tape on the back side of the door. Remove the film from the front and back of the window. Line up the holes in the window with the holes in the door and then secure with the screws. Take the other door and slide the hinge tube into the hole at the bottom of the door. Before sliding the channel onto the door, make sure that the holes in the channel line up with the notch in the door. Connect the two halves of the handle together and then secure the handle to the door. 
Make sure not to forget to add your pull handle oriented like this. Add the locking hardware to the door and secure tightly. Attach the window using the same method as the other door. When connecting your floor panels, there's two outer panels and two inner panels. The orientation of your inner panels is crucial, so make sure that when you connect your outer panel and your inner panel, that the edge with the two circular holes connects to the outer panel. Have one person stand on a floor panel, lift the next floor panel, interlock the tabs, and lay it back down. On the next floor panel, make sure that the edge with the circular holes is opposite the previous panel. Now add the final floor panel. It's crucial that the circles on the inner floor panels are further apart to accommodate the doors on one of the long edges. Your door can go on either long edge, so add your bushings to the circular holes on the side you want your doors on. Secure the four panels together through the divots along the edges. Add a wall support to each wall, making sure it goes in the channel just to the right of the cutout. Also make sure that the two holes in the wall support are at the top. On the window wall panel labeled BDI, add the wall support into the channel just to the right of the window, making sure that the two holes on the wall support are at the top. On the window wall panel labeled BDH, add the wall support just to the left of the window, making sure that the two holes are at the bottom. On the back of the window wall panel, add the beetle tape into the groove all the way around the window. Remove the plastic film from both sides of the window panel.
Line up the holes in the window pane with the holes in the wall panel and then secure with the hardware. Add the window pane to the other window wall panel using the same method as before. Just to the right of the bushing, insert the window wall panel labeled BDI into the cutouts. Slide the window wall panel to the left to lock it into place. I'm comfortable kicking the wall panel over with my foot. If you're not comfortable with that, go ahead and use a rubber mallet and a block of wood to hit it over into place. Add the corner wall panel labeled AGW to these cutouts on this corner. Slide the wall panel to the left to lock it into place. Lean the wall away, fold the corner over, line up the tabs with the cutouts, and apply downward pressure to lock it into place. Now secure the two wall panels together. Add two wall panels labeled AHD and secure them using the same method as before. Add the corner wall panel labeled AGL to this corner using the same method as before. Add three wall panels labeled AHD to the rear of the shed. Add the corner panel labeled AGW to this corner using the same method as before. Add two more wall panels labeled AHD using the same method as before. Add your final corner panel labeled AGL to this corner using the same method as before. Add the window wall panel labeled BDH using the same method as before. Now we're gonna add the shelf brackets. The shelf has three different height positions. Choose which one you want yours to go on and add the brackets. We're going to put ours in the middle. Place the shelf onto the brackets, making sure that the notches on the back of the shelf go against the wall and that you fold the flaps on the ends up.
secure the shelves to the brackets and the wall. With the help of another person, lift a large gable up into place on the 8 foot wall and secure with the hardware. Take one of the trusses from earlier and place it into the cutouts on the rear wall and on the cutout on the front, making sure that the notch on the truss goes on the front. While one person holds the truss, have another person slide the roof panel over the gable and into the truss. You'll know the roof is in the correct position when the alignment nub aligns up with the notch on the truss. Secure the roof panel to the wall panel through these four holes. Secure the roof through the first three holes in the gable. Secure the roof through the first two holes in the truss. Insert the roof support into the cutout on the gable and the roof. Now finish securing the roof through the last two holes. Add a roof panel using the same method as before, opposite the previous roof panel. Repeat the previous steps for the gable, truss, and two roof panels on the opposite side of the shed. Put the center truss into the notch at the back of the wall, then lift the truss up until the support touches the other trusses. Secure the support to the trusses with the hardware. With the help of another person, take the left door and slide the hinge tube into the bushing, making sure that the hole in the hinge tube lines up with the slit in the bushing.
Insert the cotter pin and use a pair of pliers to expand the pin. Repeat the previous step for the other door. Take the final gable and slide it onto the hinge tubes of each door. Lift the center truss into the notch at the top of the gable, then secure the bracket to the gable. Once you've secured the bracket to the gable, go ahead and tighten the screw. Add the two rear roof panels using the same method as the other roof panels. Now attach the strike plate for the left door to the floor. Now add the drainage plate to the gutter channels oriented like this. Only finger tighten this hardware for now. Repeat the same steps for the left gutter channel. Fold the flaps on the large angled roof panel up and then place it over the front gable. Secure the roof panel to the gable and the truss through the 12 holes. Secure the drainage plate to the roof panel through this hole and then tighten this hardware. Repeat the same step for the other drainage plate. Place your triangular roof panel labeled DRB in front of the previous roof panel. While one person applies downward pressure, you can insert the two screws. Take your roof panel labeled BDR and place it on the right side of the roof, making sure that it sits flat next to all the neighboring roof panels. Add the roof panel labeled BDS to the left side of the roof using the same method as before. While one person is on the outside applying downward pressure, secure the roof panels with the hardware.
take the roof cap labeled AGG and place it over the roof panels and the gable and secure with the hardware. Take the next roof cap and place it over the previous cap, then secure it to the roof panels, the cap, and the trusses. Repeat this process until you've placed all of the caps on the roof. Fold your skylight in half, push it through the hole in the roof panels, and then secure with the hardware. Repeat this process for the remaining three skylights. Into the wall hooks, into the notches, on the wall, anywhere you would like. Attach the gussets to each truss in this location, making sure they're oriented like this. You will be drilling through the underlying metal, so make sure your drill is fully charged and on the highest torque setting. You're going to add a gusset to each side of every truss except for the front side of the center truss. For each truss, lift the short truss brace up so that it rests against the truss and secure it with two screws on each side.
add a gable support bar just above the door, oriented like this, and then secure it with the two screws into the truss. Push the support flat against the gable and the roof, and then secure to the hinge tube inside the door through those two holes. Repeat the previous steps, securing a support on the opposite side of the gable. If you're having a hard time getting the doors to align, follow this link here to see a video on how to properly align the doors of your shed. Have one person go in the shed with a 7 16 wrench, close the doors and lock the latch. Adjust the locking mechanism and the strike plate, and then once they line up, have the person inside tighten the hardware. Since we're inside, we're not going to be able to anchor our shed, but it's important that you do, so refer to your manual in section 13 to see how to properly anchor your shed. Failure to anchor your shed may cause serious injury or property damage. Thank you for watching this video on how to assemble your lifetime 10x8 outdoor storage shed. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team and check out our other awesome products at lifetime.com.